Good evening. We're going to be doing a short lecture on Chapter 1 of Organizational Policy and Change, uh, CR 650 in the Master's uh, in Criminology program. The uh, Chapter 1 is called Analyzing the Problem, and from its um, name you can get the fact that that um, we're going to be looking at a specific problem that uh, we see that exists and we're going to be uh, looking to um, analyze the various components of that system and see where there are weaknesses that we might be able to um, encourage change so um, the first step in that is going to be to document the need for change, uh, which means we need to collect and analyze data to define what the problem is, um, where the problem is, how big it is, who's affected by it, uh, who's affected by it will be a, a major um, point when we come when it comes to implementation, and then what evidence um, of the problem exists. So. Um, how is it uh, presenting itself? How is it showing, how is the problem showing um, either out in the public or to the um, stakeholders that are um, using that policy? Um, step two will be to describe the history of the problem. How long has the problem existed? Um, the the history of the problem really will determine how embedded it is and how likely it is that uh, immediate change uh, would be possible. Um, have there been any changes over time to that policy? Uh, if there have been changes to it over time, then the likelihood is that that change is accepted by the stakeholders. And so um, we'll be looking to see if that uh, change over time is something that um, has occurred in the past. We'll be looking to examine potential causes of the problem. So we don't just want to know that there is a problem. We want to know what's causing it. Um, what the theories, uh, what theories do we have that um, are causes for that problem? And the intervention to be chosen must target um, one or more specific causes supported by the research. So when we're looking to uh, create change, um, we can't just identify a problem and say, this is how we're gonna change it. Um, we've gotta look at what's been done in the past, uh, how, how much intervention has been done, and then um, we need to pick an intervention strategy that is supported by research. So something that uh, we can point to and say, this has worked in other places, this has worked um, in other groups, uh, whatever the research is, uh, we just need to be able to document that and um, present it when we get to the point of um, actually trying to affect the change itself. The fourth step is to examine the uh, previous interventions. So what's been tried in the past, um, that assumes that there are um, prior interventions that have been done, uh, which uh, follows a logical path that uh, someone has identified this problem in the past. And so what we want to do is look at any interventions that have been done and see which ones are the most promising. What, what's been done that's actually worked? Um, and that might help us uh, as we identify interventions to use, uh, we may be able to use some that have been used in the past uh, maybe just tweaking them to um, uh, better uh, handle some of the, the current issues that we see. Fifth step is to identify relevant stakeholders. So I've talked about stakeholders throughout this lecture, um, but identifying those stakeholders is, is so important. Um, who are the different groups of people um, that are affected by this problem? Is it 
uh, so you you have the people that work directly with um, this policy or procedure, whatever it is, uh, that they're going to be a direct stakeholder, and the people on the other end of that policy. So if um, let we'll be talking about school violence um, throughout this course as it's one of the the main issues that we look at today as a uh, need for uh, criminal justice reform and so uh, when we uh, look at school violence for instance who are the relevant stakeholders in that in that issue so you have uh, teachers so teachers definitely are relevant stakeholders because they are directly in charge of a class full of students. You also have the administrators that uh, are direct stakeholders in uh, the policy. They're going to be the ones that are the decision makers that will um, eventually uh, approve of any type of uh, policy change that affect uh, things in the school as well as the school board um, the school board whatever the school is uh, that school board will be the members of that school board will be relevant uh, stakeholders in this issue and most importantly are the students uh, there's no reason to have a school if it's not for the education of students so how does the um, problem that exists how does it affect those students because they are relevant stakeholders another area of relevant stakeholders in this issue um, in specifically school violence is school resource officers and the uh, local police department all of them have a stake in how the policy is implemented and if there is a problem it is affecting those people as well. Next, we'll be looking to conduct a systems analysis, uh, which means that we're gonna be conducting research on the system uh, within which the problem exists. And in this case, the, the school violence would be, uh, we'd be looking at research done within the system, the school system, uh, where we've identified uh, violent violence and where we see the violence as being um, extraordinary to the point of um, needing intervention and then determine uh, how the system can create uh, contribute and maintain that problem um, how it's done that in the past how the these various stakeholders how they've um, maintained this problem up until now and finally, we're going to identify the barriers to change and support for change. And earlier I talked about um, the history of the problem, and that would have a, a direct effect on uh, the barriers to change. Because if the problems existed for years, it means that, they, that the relevant stakeholders have already created their own workaround for whatever the problem that we see is and we we have to document that there is need for additional change and so uh, we need to identify who those likely supporters are for the uh, given change because those supporters are going to be the people that uh, will provide us with the easiest path to uh to implementing the changes that we uh determine need to be uh need to be made um, those most likely to resist are going to be those uh directly involved with the problem um, even though they they're the ones most affected uh, like i said they've already found workarounds on their own and so those workarounds in their minds might be working well enough. So we need to, to take this uh, systematically. And so chapter one covers all of that. Um, we just need to get some preliminary analysis done 
to identify the issues and look at uh, the change that um, to this particular problem. So what I want you to do is go through the um, uh, slideshow that I've, pr I've provided for you and read your chapter. And then um, at the end of this week, we will be going through the uh, first discussion forum uh, for this course. And that discussion forum uh, topic will be based on the, the issue that I talked about, which is uh, school violence. And so uh, this will give you an opportunity to present what you see as, a poten as potential issues with school violence. Most of you are out of the public school system uh, for seven, six, seven years at this point. So it may, things change significantly within the school system in a short period of time. So things may have changed since you were last in there. Um, but use that as a resource because trust me, you've been there a lot more recently than I have. Um, it's been at least 10 years since I've been out of public, the public school system, got out of high school. So um, anyway, get, um, get your thinking caps on. Uh, we're going to be looking to uh, analyze this problem and we're going to be looking to uh, adapt this problem to our uh, course throughout the semester. Um, we're going to be looking at a lot of others as well, but this one in particular, I think, is uh, relevant um, and needs to be addressed. So anyway, have a great week, and um, I look forward to the discussion forums this week, and then we can uh, move into week two next week. Thanks a lot, and have a great week.